And Omar Katsi is coming out. Well, and Dusty Baker heading out with the trainer to check on Alvarez. They were going to let it go, but Alvarez started to take a little walk. Remember the Astros on their bench, Dallas. They got Michael Brantley, Yuri Gurriel, a couple of regulars, one a left handed hitter, one a right handed hitter, and somebody just got thrown out. It was Mark Katze. Mark Katze just got thrown out by Mike Malinsky, who seems to be the owner of a little bit of a short fuse. So Mike Malinsky went out to the mound to break up the meeting, and he throws out Mark Katze. Well, sometimes you see an umpire that just eh, gets a little overzealous, in my opinion. And Did go, says plate umpire Vic Carapazza. And Choi not happy about that. And the Rays bench not happy. Well, Kevin Cash, he is well, well there Cash you go. Has just been ejected. And Kevin Cash fired up here. Good for him. Well, the thing that really makes it bad for the hitter too is it's the breaking ball and it never even comes near the plate. If I could see it was a fastball running, but the breaking ball starts a foot off the plate, ends up six inches off the plate, and he rings them up, and that's just where the frustration mounts. Since we said goodbye. Gabe Morales writing in his book that Davey Martinez has been ejected. And that's just one of the pitches that led to that. Yeah, it's just not a strike. I mean, you know, Franny, we remarked. Suddenly, almost everything's a strike. Right. Cesar mad. High, low, in, out. I mean, Gabe Morales is calling everything a strike now. Yeah, and Davey's going out protecting his player. The one thing that I will always say about Cesar Hernandez, the moment he looks back at an umpire, and says something and that umpire is usually wrong because he doesn't say much. Now went in three and oh. What are we doing? The care of get back behind the plate. This is ridiculous. There is no way anybody is throwing at Michael A. Taylor. If you're going to go talk to the Astros closer, this is ridiculous. 2 0 pitch was inside to Taylor. Carapaza elected to call in the other umpires to see if they felt there was intent here in a 7 3 game in the ninth. Oh, man, a ridiculous warning. Good job by Baldy going out there, making sure that his pitcher stays in the game. This is just getting worse for Vic Carapaza. That's embarrassing. Presley gets tossed that after bears. warnings are issued on a 2-0 pitch in the ninth inning of a 7-3 game with two outs in the nine hitter. Man, hit him. What's Ty saying? I'm not sure. I'm just saying it didn't hit him. And now the Astros dugout just exploded. And now both sides are getting into it. Here we go. Now Scott Service, one of the first to spill out. That escalated quickly. Now somebody said something. I think what Ty was doing is he said that it hit him. The umpire said it didn't. And then Ty looked at the dugout and wanted Scott to take a look at it. I hope everybody calms down a little bit. Well, Dusty's talking with Ty. Are we clear on whether or not that was ruled a hit by pitch or not? 
I don't think it was. I think I think Ty thought it hit him. He turned around to the dugout and gave it one of oh, these to his was. ear. That would make sense. And then so Scott was saying something, and I think the other dugout, you can see it hit him. I mean, it's going. It, and Scott wanted to take a look at it, and then all of a sudden, the Houston dugout started screaming across the field. I think it's going to hit him in the back. It does. It certainly deflects. It looks like it. it clearly changes directions. Yeah. So I think, and that's why Ty was saying it hit him. The umpire couldn't see it because it was behind him. Makes sense. And now Scott's being talked to. I think they said they're throwing him out. Throwing Scott. They've thrown Scott out. That's what he was looking at, pointing like you have to go. And now yeah. they're throwing. Yeah, they've thrown somebody out over there. Correct. Yes. I thought Jordan Baker, the first base umpire, he was over towards the Houston dugout, and he was the one. I was talking to some of the Houston people and my impression of that was that he was telling them because stuff was going on that that he was letting them know who was going to go or not. That was Omar Lopez one of the base coaches for the Astros. Watch out now come on now. Crawford is into second now. What's going to be assessed well, here? Yeah, I mean, what do we have going on? Chris Guccione, the home plate umpire. I mean, he's got to be out, right? I would think so. You got to run Naris now. I would hope that after the first time a tie was hit, that everybody was warned. That's an automatic. Naris has to be out of this game, and he is. There you go. Yeah. Now come on, man. Don't put palms up on that. Yeah, he said you have to. You have to. That's the way the rules work. I mean, that was at the head. Behind him and at his head. Yeah, that's what he's telling him, too. I wouldn't even waste time explaining it to him. I mean, Dusty knows. Yeah, that's okay. That's enough. Let's go, man. Yeah, you all can sort this one out later. Check swing foul. And I don't know if Max is claiming catcher's interference. He checked his swing. Or maybe just claiming he didn't make contact with it. And here comes Rocco Baldelli. There was an audible sound, but I wonder whether Max didn't feel like he did and how much dispute there's been over the strike zone. And he's right, he wasn't even close to that ball. That was glove shin pad. Even on that angle, you can tell he did not make contact, and all Rocco can do here is ask the home plate umpire. To ask for some help, and that's what he's going to do. All the umpires will converge, and there's a chance one of the three saw the ball miss the bat by about six inches. You're grimacing. You I don't think know. there's a chance. I don't know if it's overturned. This might be one of the ones where you get together and say, "Yeah, I think I messed that up. Somebody overruled me here." <laughs> I don't know. And nobody saw it differently. I'm guessing. Here's the crew chief. Well, we had the benefit of slow motion too. Right. There was two sounds. I think that's a lot of times what gets you. It's it's. Yeah, they missed it by at least four inches. And now Rocco is going to pick up the argument here, and he may get tossed. There's been some disfavor from the Twins dugout anyway, with all the walks. And here the catcher clanks one, and instead it's a strike to Kepler, and there he goes. But also the difference. Polanco still at first base. If that's not a foul ball, he advances to second base. Rocco's right. You can't miss that call. You cannot miss that call. A ball that's that far away from a bat. And I think the frustration with the strike zone earlier in the game, some of the calls, maybe the call on the Buxton at bat. The Crew chief is Jim Reynolds, and he's doing his best to keep Rocco away from Alex Tosi. But again, the frustration's been mounting throughout this game.
This is the most definitive angle, and we showed it to you live. That's six, eight inches away from the bat. Runner goes. The throw sails into center field. Quan tries to get up. He can't. As he and Elvis Andrus were tangled up just a little bit. Quan looked like he tried to get up and wanted to go to third, but Elvis was not doing it on purpose, but they were just kind of laying on top of him a little bit. Yes. Legs got caught up there. And you can see by that replay that really wasn't a whole lot either either guy could do. Elvis obviously was not doing it on purpose. No, you see Elvis's left leg come down on the head and shoulder of Quan, and as Quan's trying to get up, because of where Elvis's leg is, he kind of slides off his head. And Tito saying, "What's going on? We don't have anything here." Yeah, something's up here. He may get tossed out. Well, and they are going to talk about it. He was speaking with. Jeremy Rehack, the second base umpire. Now that all four umpires are going to get together. But Terry Francona, for, for as we saw the play, and there really wasn't anything strange going on in the play. He was very upset. Yeah. Well, and you can see Rehack actually told Tito, hey, I can ask. The crew chief is Paul Emmel. That's Paul Emmel just walking in there at the end with the glasses on it. And Kona is very hot. Well, he's he's explaining uh, right he's now. Gone. You can see him say scores 4-2. Close ball game. Lane Thomas next. See if our theory holds true here about a pitching change. We're having angry words now. Exchange and council's been ejected from the game. He was going to get his money's worth on the mound on the way to the mound to make the pitching change. Oh, went right into it too. I actually think Juan de Jesus has been right in the situation right here. That's why he's on the offensive. Picked up in between innings. Laureano yelling, not, the, not yelling at the home plate umpire, I guess. Or who he was hollering at? Paul Emmel, the crew chief, maybe. That's. That's the wrong guy usually to yell at the crew chief. Yeah, because he's going to be behind the dish tomorrow. And he gave him the heave. Broken bat. Yeah. Base hit into center field. Schwarber's going to score. Hoskins is around third, heading for home. The throw to the plate. He is out at home plate. Now let's see what happens here. You may end up seeing. Batters or runners. He may score. They may count that because the infielder got in the way of the the base runner Reese Hoskins and that's what's going to happen. It's going to be a two run base hit. I got to believe that Davey Martinez is going to get thrown out of the game here because there's the other school of thought that this was interference by the base runner such that the defender could not make the play. Well, now Davey is uh, going to go back yep. because he's been ejected from the ball game. So he's been ejected because he did not like the call. Well, he's still going after him. So they call obstruction on this, and Davey and Danai Sonia are still going at it. Well, they really some one of the coaches should probably get. Him yeah, out somebody should go some out point. and just get him out because he's already said his piece. A couple of checks to the runner. And the 0-1. And that hit the batter. They appealed down to first. And Ryan Wills said he didn't swing. And the Blue Jays are livid because the swing overrides the hit by pitch. You, you and somebody could. just got tossed. What? Maybe what? Schne John Schneider or Charlie or somebody just got tossed. And you can understand the frustration again because of all the calls here this inning. Yeah, you called them the 50 50 calls, and yeah. you're absolutely right. That was a swing. You could hear Alec Manoa yelling at the umpire. That was a swing. Yeah. And it looked like a swing. Ball hit him. 
But again, the swing overrides the hit by pitch. If they call it a swing, how is that not called a swing? I, I, I don't know. McNeil on the outfield grass at second. Pitch to Jazz. Called strike three on a pitch that was six inches off the plate. I've never seen Jazz that animated. Strike zone today for Adam Beck has been terrible, though. It really has been. And Jazz just got run. And now here comes Donnie. Yeah, you don't want him to get suspended. And Jazz definitely had a case right there. That was inside by a pretty wide margin. Donnie might get run too. Crew chief Alan Porter trying to help Jazz calm himself down. He had a case right there. That is in off the plate. There's been several that have been uh, off the plate that uh, he has given a calls to, and that is the fifth time today that they have struck out. And swing. <laughs> well, the Jets are getting on Jim Reynolds now, and he's just thrown somebody out. That's my favorite when you throw somebody out and then you don't know which one it is. So you just point. I mean. And that's a full count. See right here. All right. There's an argument there for sure. Reynolds is just waiting. Jansen Viscotti, our plate umpire this afternoon. Here's a 2 2, and that is definitely a ball full count. Oh no, they're going to. Well, so much for that. He, he went. <laughs> that is amazing. Jerry Meals on the appeal said, no, that is strike three. Home plate umpire Jansen Visconti. Did he just throw somebody out? Wow. A.J. Hintz just got tossed. Wow, he is hot. We haven't seen him this hot. I think the home plate umpire Jansen Visconti might have thrown somebody out, but he was walking toward that Tigers dugout, having some words with someone in the dugout, and that got A.J. Hinch upset. He came out, and he really let him have it, and it wasn't very long before Jansen Visconti tossed A.J. Hinch. Well, you only got to hope that it was Hinch that he was yelling at in the dugout, so there's nobody else tossed out besides the manager. <laughs> Called strike three, and Corey Blazer early has got a wide zone. North, south. And north. And more north. Picks up his second strike out of the inning. As we went to commercial break, just want to show you this. So Corey Blazer, of course, had that punch out of J.J. Manajevic, and the hitting coach for the Astros, Alex Intron, got thrown out of the game. Complaining about the strike zone, the balls and strikes, and Blazer ran him out of the game. So already one of the hitting coaches for the Astros has been thrown out. Dusty came out and helped defend his his own guy and plead his case. But we saw an ejection while you guys were all at home watching commercials. That was quick too. And, he and the one-two, and he just missed in again. Two and two. Pete Walker hollering at Doug Eddings right now. Really giving it to him. Yeah, maybe Pete got tossed. He just went down the steps. So I was looking at Pete. Maybe I missed Eddings tossing him, but it looks like Pete Walker is gone. Well, let's give you a quick word from Kia. Phil Nevin. Is coming out. Archie Bradley is up and ready to go. We'll see what Nevin decides to do. It's Gallagher, catcher, and we play Salvador Perez, who left this game dealing with a thumb injury as Salvi. 
right. Well, that's going to do it for Andrew Wance. And there's a runner at second base. So it looks like Phil Nevin just got tossed. Phil Nevin just got thrown out of the game. We were talking about that earlier. He was kind of waiting for him to work his way out, and he finally did work his way out. And he's going to make sure. Yeah. yeah. He's on Bill Welke right now at that balk. Phil's going to get his money's worth here. Yeah, this is all about that balk call, Gooby. Archie Bradley's getting loose to step aside with this pitching change. Well, evidently, there's a little bit of a carryover from last night's game to today's game. The lineup card exchange just happened. This is just moments ago. That's Guillermo Martinez, the coach for the Blue Jays, who rarely, as far as I am aware, Tabby, brings out the lineup card. He shakes Doug Eddings' hand. Eddings is at third today. He had the plate last night. And the strike zone, as everybody who watched the game knows, just was all over the place. And somebody, although that wasn't Eddings, I think that was the first base, first base on Lance yeah. Barrett who made the signal. And then Guillermo Martinez gets into it with Eddings. And unless that whole thing was fun in games, and we don't think it was, Guillermo Martinez is gone. Strike three called, and that's the ball game, and Brown's not happy. So a very, very frustrating afternoon all around for the Athletics. It was going so well, and it ends so much disappointment. Nick Lenz, horrible, is going to head off the field. The home plate umpire, he did not have a great day, and it certainly didn't end well for him. But well, no, and he sat there and ran and brownie after the ball game. What are you doing? What are you staring at? This is how it ended. Not a strike. Tighten it up. Left fielder Jesse Winker will lead things off, swinging a hot bat. Nine for 18. Here's the pitch, and it's inside, and that hits Winker. And Andrew Wants hits him, and Wants has to go, and so does Phil Nevin. Winker walking slowly out in front of home plate, and now he's getting chirped at by the Angel players. Winker going over toward the dugout, and both benches are emptying. Winker going to the Angels dugout. He is right in there. They're starting to throw punches. Holy smokes, we got a full melee going on in the on-deck circle. Everybody throwing punches. Angels out there, Mariners out there. And that was inside. It hit Winker. Winker had a few words with Stassi, walked over to the dugout. And now the umpires have their hands full trying to separate guys. Holy smokes, we have a melee in the on-deck circle. Guys are still fighting one another. They're still going at it. They're trying to separate players in the middle of the scrum, but this is one of the worst fights we have seen in a long, long time. Tensions were heated right away at the very start of the ball game with Lance throwing high and in behind. Julio Rodriguez, no doubt about the intent on that one, and now Winker is hit by Lance here in the top half of the second. So now peace is starting to be restored. Scott Service is right in the middle of that scrum along with John Bacon. The umpire is trying his best to separate the Angels and the Mariners. There is still a circle of humanity. Holy smokes. Oh, this is terrible. This is terrible. This is one of the worst I've seen, Aaron, in a long time. Crawford full, throwing full punches. Winker throwing full punches. Obviously, and it's going again. Side again. And it's going again. And Service Every is right there in it. And now the whole mad circle has moved out toward the third base line. We got Taylor Trammell holding back one angel near the dugout. While there's about 50 guys in a circle in the line between third and home plate. We've got a couple of guys on the ground being held back. And more guys are still trying to get at one another. This is one of the worst I've seen in a long, long time. 
Julio Rodriguez being separated from the pile by James Clifford. And I tell you what, the umpires really have a lot on their hands right now to settle this mess right now early in the ball game. An absolute mess. I cannot believe that the umpires did not throw Wance out of the ball game when he threw behind Julio. They now, kept Wance in there to hit somebody, and he hit Winker. That was his intent at the start of the game. That was obvious. Wance was nothing more than a hitman in this game. I mean, that is clear as day. Now service, jersey untucked, trying to shove all of his players back towards the first base bench. And now Winker's hearing it from the Angels fans as he had a greeting for them as he walks down the steps of the Mariners' dugout. Yeah, he told them a little something. But, man, tempers really flared. Punches were thrown, a lot of punches. And now... The Angels are heading back to their dugout. The Mariners heading back to their dugout. The relievers starting to go to the bullpens. And Winker is still giving it to the fans. The fans giving it to Winker. But this has all been started by the Angels. High inside pitch. Totally unintentional last night from Eric Swanson to Mike Trout. Lorenzen hitting Upton a few days ago in Seattle. Totally unintentional. This was intentional. And now you got this situation. Bench coach Freddie Benavides has the lineup card because just as we went to break, David Bell got tossed. He got ejected as he came out, assuredly arguing about the strike call of Reynolds. There was also a strike call against Pham. Each struck out looking. It had once been. A bigger zone on the day and I also think David Bell showing his team that he's got their backs. I think that's the main message here for David Bell and that's one thing that you can never take away from Bell. He's always got his players backs. And I would imagine that. Gabe Kapler in the Giants dugout is thinking well, well thank you David because. I was thinking about going out there earlier. <laughs> But because we were down by so many runs, I didn't want to make it look bad. So I'm glad that you picked up for me and said a few things to the home plate umpire that I was feeling the same way. And we're only showing you a snippet. There's another strike below the zone. Better believe, you know, with the bats that Aaron Judge is having. And Aaron Boone has been riding Sherwater all game. He keeps saying, stop calling that pitch that's low. And we've seen it before. This is something that Aaron Judge, I know he appreciates. I know this makes him want to play even harder for Aaron Boone. He's going to have his guys back, and you appreciate this if you're a player in that dugout. Because those pitches are down. He's putting Aaron Judge behind the eight ball each and every at bat to, in tonight's game. Now this isn't just well it looks like they call a lot of low strikes on him Cam. Statistically they missed that call on this guy more than any other player in the big leagues. He's six foot seven.